Hi, everyone, and good Friday. Good second day of August to you as well. Another warm, sunny one in the neighborhood, and more of that than not over the course of your weekend. There has been some light scattered showers to the south of the viewing area and closer to the border, which we have not had to deal with as of yet. We do have a slight chance thereof for the next couple of hours if you're catching the early show and for your weekend, a few dry days ahead next week, but overall a pretty Nice forecast. Temperatures averaging from the low to mid to upper 80s at times. I'll give you the weekend outlook and tell you everything else we need to know weather-wise and otherwise about our program in just a few moments. Headlines tonight will include several arrests and citations. To be perfectly honest, there appears to be a pattern to some degree, I guess you could say, uh, in regards not a pattern, but a common thread between a lot of the reports over the course of this week here in McGoffin County, as well as the viewing area, of course, a violent attack earlier in the week, another violent assault making headlines tonight. Also, a McGoffin County man jailed on serious charges of abuse of an elderly person or persons. Um, another violent attack in which a man from Sagersville has been arrested. There was a grand jury that met yesterday in McGoffin County hearing the case of a McGoffin County teacher who was charged with assaulting another McGoffin County teacher on the school grounds. I'll have uh, their verdict, so to speak, as far as rendering an indictment or not in just a few moments and talk about the charges uh, that continue in that case and a host of other news. I've got an important recall that uh, I want to pass along to you and a lot more in what's left of the half hour before I leave you for what, again, looks to be a pretty nice weekend weather-wise. Just a couple of things elsewhere. We'll talk about the McGoffin County Grand Jury in just a few moments. Right now, it's a grand jury in Pike County, which did return an indictment this week for a Pike County attorney indicted for stealing close to a million dollars from at least one of his clients, specifically closer to $800,000. Attorney Timothy Belcher was officially indicted this week by a Pike County Grand Jury for stealing money that was awarded to one of his clients after a serious and tragic car accident that took place several years ago back in 2001. His client was actually a juvenile at the time of that collision involved in that collision. That juvenile receiving an award which would not be available until turning of age and becoming an adult and upon doing so that client unnamed attempted to reach out to Belcher to access those funds approximately $800,000 Apparently, he did not have them, and they were not forwarded to that client, and he has since been charged via that indictment for theft. The attorney has a court appearance in Pike Circuit Court set for later this month and faces up to 10 years in prison. A tip says the state's attorney general has led them to a charity which was not. Attorney General Andy Bashir tells us tonight that a tip from a hospice employee in Maysville, Kentucky, led his office and seven other state's attorneys general to investigate and ultimately shut down a sham hospice charity that had been taking in millions of dollars in a settlement agreement with New Hope Foundation Incorporated out of Nashville and its directors and officers. The organization will dissolve. A total of three of its officers are banned from any charity or fundraising uh, forever from this point further. It's a multi-state enforcement that began when a Michael Parker, the director of public relations and development of Hospice of Hope in Maysville, made a report to the Office of the Attorney General saying that Hospice of Hope is the only hospice service provider in the Maysville area, and its donors were starting to get solicitations from the Hospice Support Fund for a Maysville area appeal, and those donors started to become confused and concerned, and then the report was filed. The Hospice Support Fund was a program of new hope, but Hospice for Hope did not get any of the money from those funds they solicited, or from New Hope in general, and there were a lot of those funds. Bashir said that New Hope raised funds for, by the means of telemarketing and direct mail and allegedly provided education regarding hospice services. It sent local area appeals, which appeared to donors to be solicitations from their local hospice providers, but they weren't. In 2016 alone, the organization had gross receipts of almost $4.5 million, but performed little and maybe even no program services. Their charitable gaming primarily consisted 
Pro charitable programming, my apologies, primarily consisted of fundraisers sending out information regarding the benefits of hospice care when requested, some information on their website, and some public service announcements as well. In addition to paying executive compensation of $100,000 or more and minimal other administrative expenses, the remainder of the money went to pay fundraisers to solicit donations on behalf of New Hope. It has been shut down, and some proceeds hopefully will now go where they are indeed intended. Well, the first report of a serious nature tonight, and I have many. This one involves disturbing details, according to local police, about an ongoing pattern of elder abuse here in McGoffin County that resulted in the arrest of a McGoffin County man. McGoffin County Sheriff's Deputy Brian Tipton arrested 39-year-old Courtney Reisner of Sagersville, according to Tipton's case notes, he received a report of what was ongoing elder abuse by Courtney Reisner. According to statements from Reisner's grandparents, on July the 31st, Reisner grabbed his 82-year-old grandmother by the right arm and threw her onto the bed, and then proceeded to punch a hole through a door of the bathroom. The week before, Officer Tipton says, on July the 23rd, Reisner made his 84-year-old grandfather go out and weed eat in the hot conditions of that day. And reportedly afterwards, Reisner was not happy with the job performance of his grandfather, who is said to be in the early stages of dementia, and punched him in the chest. Later on, around August the 1st, Reisner reportedly forced his grandmother to write him two checks on her account for $300 and $250, respectively, one to pay for a doctor and the other for his child support. And sadly, Tipton details in the complaint warrant that he has evidence of several other occurrences like these that have happened since last fall, saying that Reisner has repeatedly threatened his grandparents, saying he would hurt them or anyone else who interfered with him, repeatedly intimidating and threatening his grandparents in order to get money from them. This next report coming out of Johnson County just earlier this morning, Deputy Jesse Mullins with the Johnson County Sheriff's Department responded to a collision on Patterson Creek off of Route 172. There was, according to eyewitness reports, a female behind the wheel of a vehicle that collided with a parked car. She fled the scene on foot and was found later with a child that was believed to be in the car when the collision happened. She was arrested, and that's not the entire story tonight. I just got off the phone with Bill Mead of the Johnson County Sheriff's Department, and along with his details and that from a uniform citation penned by Officer Castle with the Johnson County Sheriff's Department, we understand that Randy Ritz, 41, of Hager Hill, was involved in a vehicle collision earlier this morning, uh, sometime around 9 o'clock or so. Uh, this actually happening, I do believe, on Peterson Creek off of, or Patterson Creek off of Route 172 this morning. It was then that she was traveling on Patterson Creek and struck a parked vehicle. But she struck this parked vehicle violently enough to where it spun the parked vehicle around and then slammed into a utility pole, breaking that utility pole in half. She was actually apprehended, though, in another portion of Johnson County after she fled the scene on foot. She was found by Officer Tim Clark uh, and Deputy Jesse Mullins, I do believe, as Clark was arrived to assist, at a residence on Williams Branch. And she was found with an 11-year-old child with her, who right now Meade believes was also in the vehicle at the time of the collision. So after giving her field sobriety tests, all of which she failed miserably, she was arrested thus far on charges of driving under the influence with aggravated circumstances related to having the small child in the car with her and leaving the scene of an accident. The officers say that other charges as well may be pending. They also tell me that when they arrested her at that Williams Branch residence, that police opened up another investigation into stolen ATV parts and a stolen ATV that they found while arresting Ritz. The rest of that story is, is that when Deputy Clark went to make the arrest on Williams Branch, he noticed 
an array of ATV parts that appeared to be of a suspicious nature. And they started to investigate the area. They also found a trail of ATV tracks leading up behind the residence. They followed those tracks, and according to Deputy Meade, they found a stolen Honda Pioneer side-by-side -side that had been reported stolen back in April. Now, no charges are filed in this theft case as of yet. Meade says they are taking those charges before the Johnson County Grand Jury. I'm going to take you to a commercial break. I'll be right back. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. Big Sandy Healthcare and Hope Family Medical Center are proud to announce the newest addition to their staff and team of over 200 dedicated employees and medical professionals. Podiatrist Dr. Cheryl Stalder Cheney has joined Big Sandy Healthcare at the Hope Family Podiatry Center in Sagersville on Mariah Boulevard, just a couple of doors up from the Lee's Famous Recipe. For anything minor or serious foot or ankle related, Dr. Stalder Cheney is now accepting new patients at Hope Family Podiatry. Center in Salyersville. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes to expert collision and auto body to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Salyersville. 349-8785. Appalachian Wireless has a question for you. Would you rather pay $650 or $66 for a smartphone? If you think this answer is simple, then the Appalachian Advantage plan is for you. Pay less upfront for today's hottest smartphones and then pay just a few dollars more every month on the monthly bill. Many smartphones are $5 a month or less after you factor in the $20 discount from the Advantage plan compared to the contract offering. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Payment agreement required. See store for details. Your new IGA has fresh brewed coffees and delicious donuts made seven days a week. Daily made breads piled high with any meat or cheese you can think of. And come and taste the salads, broccoli and cauliflower, cornbread, and their gourmet chicken salad made fresh right here. They've got fruit and vegetable and meat trays made with a little love and celebrate anything with perfectly professionally made cakes. All fresh and ready for your next meal party or event at your Sagersville IGA, where it's a new day, place, and wait. In other local headlines tonight, a sitting McGoffin County grand jury has amended the charges against a McGoffin County teacher accused of assaulting a, another teacher on school grounds earlier this year. In our initial report here on Your News Today and in the Sagersville Independent, on around April the 10th, Sagersville, or rather, McGoffin County School Superintendent Scott Helton confirmed that Jackie Howard, a teacher at South, South McGoffin Elementary, had been suspended since the alleged incident. Howard accused of going to North McGoffin Elementary, where her recently deceased husband was the assistant principal, and assaulting another teacher, after which she was facing charges of third degree assault of a school employee and second degree terroristic threatening both Class D felonies. A court summons was issued in her name. Those charges were presented before the sitting McGoffin County Grand Jury on yesterday for their consideration. Those charges and that case were presented before the McGoffin County Grand Jury on yesterday and upon taking all the evidence into consideration chose not to indict teacher Jackie Howard. They did, however, lessen or amend the charges from two felony counts that I just mentioned to one single count of assault under extreme emotional disturbance. That is a Class B misdemeanor, and as such, her charge and case is now remanded from circuit court, from the felony charges, to district court, where she has a court appearance set for this coming Monday morning before Judge Dennis Prater for once again a single and misdemeanor count of assault under extreme emotional disturbance. I've still got at least two other headlines that I'll have in just a few moments on the heels of a violent assault and attack that I reported earlier. Two more making headlines tonight. One man still being sought, one arrested. 
uh, and one actually already in jail related to another case but served with other charges. I'll get caught up on those in just a few moments right now. A couple of important things I need to get, need to get you caught up on on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. First up, a big announcement about a big yard sale tomorrow at the Licking River Baptist Church, specifically hosted by the Licking River Baptist Church at the K Center, of course, the old Sayer Elementary School, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. They can only say it like this, awesome deals, especially when it comes to kids' clothes and a lot of back-to-school stuff and a whole lot of other stuff, cheap. They're going to have a big blowout tomorrow, yard sale, starting at 9 a.m. at the K Center the old Sayer Elementary School. Don't forget, a week from tomorrow is the big open bass tournament hosted by the Elk Creek Free Will Baptist Church. They're going to blast off from the Clay Lick boat ramp at 6 p.m. that evening. They'll weigh in at 2, and in between $100 per hour for big fish, $1,000 in first place, other big cash prizes. If you have any questions, call 496-7302. At the first of next week, two big events set for the extension office, both dealing with food preservation Preservation, canning and otherwise. Monday evening, beginning at 5 o'clock at the McGoffin County Extension Center Service, they'll have canning, that is pressure canning and water bath canning, uh, demonstrations, information, techniques, and otherwise. And then, of course, another food preservation the following morning, Tuesday morning at 10, all from your McGoffin County Extension Service. And anytime you've got an announcement like this or birthday or anniversary, as you know, and I tell you every weeknight, this is how you tell me so I can tell everyone else. Moving on, I have one announcement via tonight's funeral services, this coming in loving memory tonight of Alan R. Collett, known to all who loved him as Bub, wishing him a happy birthday in heaven and from his mom, his dad, Braden, Carla, Katie, Emily, Kenley, Tim, and Brittany, in loving memory. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years, Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. It's time to see what a great time just 10 bucks can get you while you help out a lot of amazing organizations. It's time for the 16th annual McGoffin County Community Day featuring Russell Moore in third time out, Ralph Stanley II and the Clinch Mountain Boys, Hammertown, Blue Highway, Nathan and Chessie Arnett Band, Route 1081, Terry Miller and Traveler, plus the Project Echo Kids and a special performance by Waylon Bays. And of course, more food, fun, games, and prizes than you can stand. And not only does your 10 bucks get you in, but it also gets you entered to win this Ford Fusion to be given away that night and kids under 12 get in free at the 16th annual McGoffin County Community Day Saturday, August the 17th all starting at 10 a.m. A little of what's new at Parkway Gun and Pawn. A big selection of hunting, bully knives, some to use, some to collect, or both, starting as low as $14.99 a piece. Hey gamers, while they last, they just got in two PS4 Pro editions in perfect condition. And as new, still in the packaging, big flat screens at big discounts. A new selection of kitchen gear and appliances, and even a new in the box 30 gallon electric hot water heater. You never know what you're going to save on, but you're always going to save at Parkway Gun and Pond. Here's another great coupon deal from your Sagersville Lees. Clip this coupon out of this week's edition of the Sagersville Independent, and you get not one, two, but three bucks off any family pack. That's eight, 12, 16, or 20 piece meal deals. Take $3 off just by clipping the coupon, which you can also pick up in the papers available at Lees Famous Recipe. It's a win win at your Sagersville Lees Famous Recipe. If you've never seen what's inside the seasonal shop, you've never seen anything like it. And if you have seen what's inside the seasonal shop, you've never seen it like this. From all the styles of pillows, dishware, bedding, and wall hangings, it's full of beautiful home decor. And there are frames for anyone and any occasion. There are neat and unique ways to design and do it yourself. There are flowers too perfect to be real. And from expecting moms to newborns, toddlers, teens, and adults, the fashions and designs and jewelry are simply endless and always changing at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. 
just like that. We've jumped into the spring allergy season with all the buds and blooms, tree and grass pollen, mold and all the nasal congestion, sneezing, itchy nose and eyes and throat that they cause. Don't get caught off guard. Protect yourself daily with a quick trip to Parkway Pharmacy for over-the-counter and prescription relief. And you can always log into parkwayfarmacy.com to have your prescriptions ready when you get there at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. I spoke on several occasions the afternoon via the telephone as he was investigating a couple of active cases, as was his department, specifically Officer Jeremiah Watson with the Sagersville Police Department. He was actually earlier today on his way to an area hospital to collect medical records related to the victim of a weekend assault and then upon returning from Johnson County, or in the process, serve an arrest warrant on a Sagersville man already in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center on unrelated drug charges for which he was arrested also by Sagersville police over the weekend. 46-year-old Clarence Wayne Gibson of Sagersville was arrested by Sagersville Police Chief Matthew Watson this past Saturday night for possession of methamphetamine and possession of drug paraphernalia, while another Sagersville Police Officer, Jeremiah Watson, was still working a case from the night before on Gibson, where he had attacked or assaulted a woman to the point that he knocked her teeth out and caused other serious injuries. A neighbor across from where Gibson lives in a trailer park on Route 7 saw Gibson beating a woman, and that neighbor called 911. I'm also told that neighbor then went across the road to intervene, and when uh, he or she did so, Gibson fled on foot into the woods and wasn't seen thereafter. The female was taken to the hospital, her condition unknown at this time. And with Gibson being taken into custody the following day on the before-mentioned drug charges, authorities were able to execute the arrest warrant for assault in the second domestic violence earlier this afternoon. It was also Officer Jeremiah Watson who responded to a report over the course of the weekend. Someone discovered what they thought was a body in Dixie, specifically the Sugar Camp Bridge. Uh, they found, according to the caller who called 911, a man naked, under the bridge, unresponsive, they believe possibly dead. It looked as though he was dead and his body had been dumped there. Bleeding from the head, dried blood and marks covering parts of his body. Marks says Officer Watson that were left behind after being beaten by still an unknown object. The man was fortunately alive and was taken to the hospital. When Jeremiah Watson with the Sagersville PD got to the Sugar Camp Bridge, he found the victim still naked, still with obvious signs of being beaten. And after a while, he came to and was able to talk to the officer and was later interviewed at the hospital, telling the officer that he and two other men were actually doing drugs together and that after doing so, they attacked him. They beat him and they took his clothes and then he woke up after being unconscious under the bridge on Sugar Camp off of Dixie Avenue. His clothes were missing from the scene. The victim also claimed that he had a quantity of Suboxone prescribed to him, which the two men also stole from him. One of the two alleged assailants has been arrested, 57-year-old Timothy Ward of Sagersville, arrested for robbery in the first degree and assault in the second degree. The arrest citation lists Ward's residence as under the Sugar Camp bridge, apparently homeless and living there for an unknown amount of time. As for the second individual, I spoke with authorities today. I just got the phone with him a few moments ago, that being Officer Watson, who was on his way to the hospital to obtain medical records related to this and another story or report, actually, who tells me that they do have another man that's been identified. They're not releasing his name as of yet, but he too is wanted on charges of robbery in the first degree and assault in the second degree. Moving on, one more report before we talk about your forecast, and we say our goodbyes for the weekend. A recall by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Tens of thousands of very popular trampolines which have resulted in a few injuries. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says that 97 reports of welds breaking resulting in four minor injuries has prompted the recall of more than 23,000 trampolines made by Super Jumper. They're being recalled because those welds on those metal legs can break or fail, posing an injury or fall risk to those playing on them. 
The recall involves Super Jumper 14 and 16 foot trampolines, some, will, some sold with or without the enclosures or reinforcement clamps. You can identify them relatively easily by the Super Jumper logo being printed in the middle of the mat, but the best way to see if you have one, as I always recommend, is go to cpsc.gov, the Consumer Product Safety Commission's website. These trampolines have been sold all over the internet and elsewhere from 2011, November of 2011, to just this past June for anywhere from two to 400 bucks. They were sold online at Amazon, Hayneedle, Overstock.com, Wayfair.com, and to find out more, go to cpsc.gov. In the meantime, stop using them immediately and then contact the company for a free repair. Here is tonight's, here is your forecast for the weekend. More importantly, the first weekend of August is not going to be a bad one. A few scattered showers that have been staying well to our south today. Hopefully they'll stay there the rest of the evening and hopefully we'll not see too many over the course of your weekend. Yeah, so a slight chance of some showers to the tune of about a 30% chance of some scattered showers. Not for everyone and only till about 8. Otherwise, partly cloudy and a low of 65. The big question on everyone's mind, what about the weekend? Well, here it is, and it's not all bad. A pretty nice forecast, really. I mean, mid to low 80s over the course of the weekend, mostly to partly sunny, and still a slight chance of showers. For your Saturday, we should top out in the mid-80s, right around 85 degrees. A 20% chance of some showers, mainly after one, after a little fog in the a.m. Otherwise, mostly sunny and nice. Very few showers will you have to dodge, if any. That's on your Saturday. Almost the same for Sunday. Right now, a 30% chance of some showers and thunderstorms, mainly after 11, otherwise partly sunny. We'll knock a couple of degrees off the daytime high, down to about 83 and shower chances pretty much diminish down to 10% and zero by about 8 o'clock Sunday evening. So once again, a pretty nice weekend in store. A few clouds and a few shower chances that you'll just kind of have to watch for here and there. No real severe weather expected, and um, I'm hoping that that pattern will stay, of course, uh, true throughout the rest of the weekend. Monday is dry and beautiful, mostly sunny in 85. Tuesday is also dry and beautiful, a little warmer still, mostly sunny in 87. Another little front rolls in, and it knocks temperatures back down. We'll steadily fall back down from the mid to upper 80s to the low 80s. Wednesday, but with that shower, chances come back into the picture. Wednesday, 83, partly sunny, 40% chance. Thursday, 83, mostly sunny, a 30% chance. Friday of next week, down to about 82, possibly. Partly sunny and a 30% chance of showers before we start to warm back up. Well, that's it. That will wrap up our first Friday, at least, of August, not our first full week. We'll start that when I see you back here next time. Have a wonderful, safe weekend. Hope you'll join us back here on Monday. Good night, and thank you for watching.